Hello, this is an introduction to the Arduino Scope software. So it was written by BU's own Professor Mike Economo. So we use it in a few different classes now, and we're bringing it into EK307, EK210, BE491. So first thing you need to do is download it. In this instance, it's hosted on Blackboard. And then you're going to want to save it. You're not just going to want to open it. And we'll get to that in a second. So it saves it somewhere. Open up that file, it's in the downloads. So I want to resist the urge to just click on it. And instead, I want to move it into my MATLAB working directory. And in this case, so I have my MATLAB folder and I made a folder called EK307 Fall 2020. And I put the code in there just because it makes it a lot easier to figure stuff out or keep track of things when they're sitting in folders. If you just have a ton of stuff in that main MATLAB folder, it gets really hard to deal with. So note, you know, I downloaded it multiple times. It appended a uh, parentheses one to the, the file name. I want to rename that and just take that parentheses one out. MATLAB will probably give me trouble if that is in there. So that's out. Now we can quickly look at the code. So double click on it. It appears in the editor window up here and it's a function. So this is some nice code if you want to figure out how MATLAB really works to look at some of Professor Economo's code you know, reverse engineer it so it's good stuff so for us the important line we want to look at is what we call the baud rate and that's how fast the arduino serial port communicates with the computer that's running the matlab and that has to match so if i go into the ek307 lab 6 software and look at this line 25 down here serial.begin 57600 that matches the baud rate so everything is good so other line of code that's important that we'll look at in a minute is the sample period right here. So that tells us how many times per second, or in this case milliseconds, or it tells us what our period is between samples, like how many, what's the time between actually measuring voltage. And uh, so if the period is two milliseconds, if we want to get the frequency or the sampling rate, they call it, you know, we take the inverse of that. So two milliseconds is 500 hertz. So that means that this program measures voltage 500 times a second and then sends it over the serial port to the computer. So now let's see it run. So everything looks good. If I hit the run, it'll open up a figure window, figure 101 in this case right here. And this is our oscilloscope screen. So the GUI, you know, version of a software oscilloscope. So what's going on here is we have a plot. There's time on the horizontal axis. So volts is on the vertical axis. Then there's some settings over here where I could change the scales. So first thing we need to do before we get up and running is we need to change that sampling rate to 500 because that's what the code is set at. And then we need to connect it to the proper serial port. I'm on Windows, so it's a COM port, COM6. So on a Mac or Linux, it might be a TTY or some other port. So make sure it's the right one. Then I hit connect and it should say connected. So if it doesn't, a common thing is that maybe the Arduino software has something open and common things that might be open to the serial monitor or the serial plotter. I'm not going to click on them now, but when I do that, it sends serial data to the screen. And you can only have one of those open at, at a time. In other words, like the, you know, if you can't have two things connected to a COM port, otherwise they're going to contend with each other. Same thing if you want to reprogram your Arduino, you want to disconnect this, otherwise the Arduino software will say, hey, I can't get a, attached to that COM port because someone else owns it. So you have to give give it back basically when you're not using it or if you want to use something else. So I'm connected. Now I can hit the free run right here and you can see a waveform starting to propagate across the screen left to right in time. So we're at minus 15 seconds, get to minus 10 seconds. Now it just looks like a line, like, oh, that's pretty boring, right? What's going on here? So it might be that we're not looking close enough at the signal. So first thing I do is I change the Y scale or the voltage scale so I can get more of my screen used. And I'm going to decrease it. You'll notice, okay, so the line's getting thicker. Great, it's still a line. If I go really big, a really small time scale, it'll actually go off the screen. So you need to make sure that you're kind of within the screen right there. And, but this isn't a really good representation of a signal. It's like it's just a big blob and I could see some things happening there. So I could change my time scale, my X scale, and notice as I do that, a waveform's starting to appear. 
So it looks like some kind of triangle wave. And uh, maybe you could change that right there. I just pulled the plug out of the, the circuit board. So now I'm touching it with my finger. My finger is making that, that noise on there. So what's the frequency of that noise? And what's the amplitude? What's the peak to peak value? So we'll go down even more in our time scale. So right now we're at 25 milliseconds per division. So division is one box, you know, or one time increment. So you have voltage divisions and time divisions. So this Y scale corresponds to two volts per division. And then X scale corresponds to 25 milliseconds per division in time. And so now I see a signal here, it's a sine wave. It's kind of a rough approximation of a sine wave because we're not sampling fast enough. And this is the big difference between your $17 Arduino oscilloscope and you know one that you'd pay hundreds or thousands of dollars for. So I could stop the waveform, and, but before I do that, I'm going to tune it up a little bit. I'm going to make the Y resolution bigger just so I get more screen. And you notice it bumped off a little bit there. And I can use this offset to kind of shift it up and down. That's like a, a DC offset type of thing. So I got a nice waveform on the screen. I can stop it. And notice when I stopped it, it kind of stopped right in the middle. And this is a discontinuity. This is like new data and it's overwriting old data. So sometimes if you don't want to see that, there's a, there's a good one. You have to hit it a few times. And it's, it's hard to get it to not do that, but that's just kind of the nature of the software. So, but we could look at this and we could measure some parameters like the peak to peak voltage and the, the period between waveforms. So peak to peak voltage is you know, the minimum of a signal, you know, a period subtracted from the max. And my data tips work right here. So I see my maximum voltage is 1.77. My minimum is 0.31. So I could do that math, 1.77 minus 0.31. That gives me a peak to peak of 1.46 volts. You know, these aren't the most precise things in the world, but that's okay. We're just, we're not into, we don't need that precision yet. So same thing with time. So my X here is saying minus 0 0.036 and minus 0 0.022. Minus 0 0.022 minus negative 0 0.036. See, did I write that right? That's kind of... Yeah, so that gives me a period. In other words, a period is the time interval between successive cycles of that wave is 14 milliseconds. Once again, it's not perfectly on the money. It's not that precise because of the sampling rate, but it gets us pretty far in our labs right here. So we can look at signals. And you know, maybe you want to look at a different signal. Like now I'm looking at the, the output of my RC filter for my, my lab. I need to shift it off. So if you can't see it, I have to shift it. I could stop it and you know, do other things there. So that's an example of using the software. Now say I want to save that data. I could hit the data save thing. So this might be some like waveform, like wave one. I could save it as a map file. And when I do that, it saves it over here in my folder that I'm working in. And I can drag that map file, that binary data file, into MATLAB, and then the variables, the X data, the time, and then the Y data, the voltage appear in MATLAB, and I could plot those. So if I wanted to analyze them later on, plot X data, comma, Y data. And I typed in the word figure in front of that just so it makes a new figure window. If I just type in plot, it'll plot it in my MATLAB oscilloscope figure 101. So when you type figure, it makes it open up a new figure. And here you could see there's that saved data. So I could use all the MATLAB features like the zoom if I want to really look at something closely. You know, and then same thing, the data tips if I want to make a measurement. And you could do all kinds of processing on it. So this is a brief example of the Arduino scope made by Professor Economo. Hope you enjoy it.